You love who you love, until the relationship is a reason to see a therapist. Katy Perry and John Mayer dated for about three years and even made a song together. However, they had a bit of a rocky relationship. And um, there's a lot of respect. You know, I really uh, adore him and respect him as a musician. After breaking up and getting back together many times, the singers officially ended their romance. Why didn't they work out? It was a typical episode of American Idol, or so Katy Perry thought. At this stage of the competition, judges chose songs for the contestants to sing, and it was Noah Thompson's turn. Katy chose his song, but fellow judge Luke Bryan caused some mischief to get a reaction out of his colleague. That's when Noah began singing Heartbreak Warfare by John Mayer. Perry's reaction was instant confusion mixed with slight embarrassment. But being the icon she is, the singer played it off with some humor and offered a tip that Thompson could use in the future. I feel like maybe you should Wikipedia me. <laughs> she was also confused about the song choice. I picked John Denver, the singer said. Poor Noah was caught up in a prank he was seemingly unaware of. The contestant thought he did a lousy job because of Katie's commotion over the song. It's all a great song, you did great, but I can't talk anymore. <laughs> At this point, Luke admitted it was his idea to change the song. The Prism singer hid under the table. Who's going to pay for my extra hour of therapy, she joked. It's been like a decade since Perry and Mayer went their separate ways, but much like the California Girls singer, the memories of the two are still fresh in our minds. It feels like it was just yesterday that we thought the singers would stay in love forever and become a legendary musical couple. Sadly, their romance was short-lived and kind of messy. John has a celebrity dating history from Jessica Simpson to Jennifer Aniston. It's worth mentioning that the songwriter was also speculated to be one of the reasons for the feud between Katie and Taylor Swift, both of whom he's dated. John Mayer, man, he's just a womanizer, and his influence has resulted in some of the greatest music hits we know. The guitarist also seems to have a preference for dating much younger women and has this habit of emotionally scarring the younger women he was with. Point in case, Taylor Swift's Dear John, which is a six and a half minute song highlighting all Mayer's red flags from when they were together. All the girls that you've run dry have tired, lifeless eyes, Swift sang. Perhaps this is why even almost 10 years later, Katie got the ick when she heard someone singing her ex-boyfriend's song. Instead of guessing, we decided to revisit their romance. Interestingly, the singers met three years before they even started dating. In 2009, the pair reportedly exchanged flirty tweets and texts before officially meeting at a Jay-Z concert at Madison Square Garden just a few weeks later. According to an anonymous source, the two decided to go to Gold Bar in New York afterward and just clicked. They were so flirty and all over each other that night at the bar. They really liked each other, the insider said at the time. However, the guitarist lost his chance to woo the dark horse singer. At the MTV Video Music Awards the next day, Katie's now ex-husband, Russell Brand, was the show's host. He swooped in and got the girl. Perry and Mayer would only reconnect after the brunette finalized her divorce from Brand in 2012. By August that year, the singers were rumored to be dating. However, they had already called it quits by the month's end. A week later, the then-couple was back on and was spotted getting cozy in the VIP section of the FYF Fest in Los Angeles. When asked about his relationship with the songstress, John told Rolling Stone magazine not once, but thrice that he was happy. I'm quite happy, he said, adding, I'm happy in all aspects of my life. I'm very happy in all aspects of my life. However, the happiness didn't seem to last. Three months later, Katie and John broke up for the second time, and then got back together again. It was a pattern they infamously repeated a few more times. One of the things that united the former couple was their shared passion for music. The brunette said as much when she appeared on The Ellen DeGeneres Show in December 2013. He understands what I do because he does the same thing, and so after a long day, if it's been tough, I don't really have to go into it. He yeah. just gets it. Perry was a very supportive partner, having looked after her former flame when he was healing from an injury. Mayer damaged his vocal cords earlier that year and had to go on vocal rest following throat surgery. His former girlfriend acted as his interpreter for 10 months. And he had to be completely silent, like he was just using an iPad. And uh, I really understood that. It was like I understood that he couldn't talk, and only the way he could talk and communicate was through an iPad. He publicly thanked Katie for her understanding at one of his concerts, telling the audience she would order from me, and she would tell people, it's nice to meet you, he says. She was so patient as to continue to get to know me and love me. The guitarist then dedicated his song A Face to Call Home to his then-lover. 
music connected them romantically as well. Katie revealed that she and John liked to make out to Drake's Hold On, We're Going Home. It sounds a little bit like kind of an old vibey Lionel Richie or The Weeknd. It's sexy as hell, the singer said during her stint as a radio host for iTunes. And I listened to it with my boyfriend, so I would suggest listening to it with whoever you want to make out with, she added. Mayer reportedly cheered his then-girlfriend on at her iconic Super Bowl 49 halftime show. He reportedly referred to himself as the first gentleman of Katy Perry, praising the pop singer in the spotlight. That was his nickname, while Mayer's nickname for Perry was Prism. If you're a Katy Perry fan, you know her 2013 album was called Prism. It featured a few songs that she and John co-wrote together. Some have even speculated that songs like Legendary Lovers and Walking on Air are also about Mayer. Writing songs together wasn't enough for this former couple. In August 2013, the former pair recorded a duet titled Who You Love. The song is a soft pop ballad about falling in love. I've been such a fan. I think he's so incredibly talented. A genius songwriter, Katie said about their song collaboration at the time. To be a part of anything he was doing was just natural, she added. Even though their song will live forever on YouTube and Apple Music, the on-again, off-again couple officially called off their romance in July 2015, after almost three years of dating. At the time, neither Perry nor Mayer gave a statement about the split, and sources didn't offer many details either. In the past, however, it was speculated that Perry's busy work schedule and the seven-year age gap put some strains on the relationship. It wasn't the steepest in John's history, but seven years still can be a bit much. People Magazine reported that when the two were dating, Katie still liked to party, and an insider said her then-boyfriend just wanted to get away from all the parties and go home. The Dark Horse singer once called Mayer a tortured soul. She even confessed, I do have to figure out why I am attracted to these broken birds, referring to both John and her former husband, Russell. It looks like Taylor Swift wasn't the only one with some bad memories. It's clear the guitarist has a bad rep with his ex-lovers. In June 2017, Katie released her album, Witness. Fans assumed many of the songs contained lyrics about John. One of the songs is called Save As Draft. In the song, the pop star goes on about a former love and how she contemplated getting back in touch with him. I write it, erase it, repeat it, but what good will it do to reopen the wound? So I take a deep breath and I save as draft, Perry sang. Fans feel the lyrics could be about John because he is an active Twitter user and has used the phrase save his draft many times before on the app. In the meantime, the Dead & Company musician admitted that he wrote the song Still Feel Like Your Man about Perry. Who else would I be thinking about, he told the New York Times. It's a testament to the fact that I have not dated a lot of people in the last five, six years. That was my only relationship. So it's like, give me this, people, the musician added. Perry began dating her current husband, Orlando Bloom, shortly after Mayer, and except for a brief break in 2017, they've been together ever since. They got engaged on Valentine's Day 2019 and welcomed a daughter, Daisy Dove Bloom, the following year. John, for his part, has waited before trying to find love again. The singer was reportedly linked to 23-year-old actress Kiernan Shipka. However, some tabloids claim the two are just friends who like to sometimes share a meal together. Other than that, we've just heard rumors about flings, like the brief moment the singer was flirting with comedian Larry David's daughter, Carrie. Not all relationships last, but we wouldn't be who we are today without meeting some special people along the way. Katy Perry may joke about needing therapy when thinking about John Mayer, but the song they made together came from a place of pure love. Their love burned bright while it lasted, and in the long run, helped them grow as artists. Be well, and be kind.